Stanley Drucker, it is a great pleasure to have you here uh, offstage with the New York Philharmonic at Barnes & Noble, and it's a great honor for this enormous crowd to have a chance to spend a few minutes with you to celebrate your career. Thank you, Jeff. You were born in Brooklyn. Where did you, where did you grow up? Everybody from Brooklyn wants to know. Well, you know, Brooklyn is a city of, of neighborhoods, and the neighborhood is very important. Well, uh, actually, I lived... Uh, in two places in Brooklyn. Uh, the first was Brownsville. <laughs> up until uh, I got onto the seventh grade, and then we moved to uh, South Brooklyn, which uh, a lot of people know today as Park Slope. Right. All right. So, all right. So now everybody has even more connection with Stanley. I live where Stanley used to live. What was the first music that you heard around the house in the neighborhood? Well, you know, they were small apartment buildings in Brownsville, and uh, they had, I guess you'd call them uh, courtyards or rear yards between buildings. And uh, uh, there was a fellow that came along with a clarinet on one of those occasions with, when we, one looked out the window. I guess he was playing uh, klezmer-style clarinet, and people would uh, throw coins to him that they wrapped up in uh, pieces of newspaper. And I think that was my first musical experience. Um, classical music in your home, radio in the house? What did, you, well, what, the, what did your parents listen to? Just uh, everything, you know, that was on at the time. Uh, mostly it was, uh, it was big band era, you know, the, the, uh, the, the wonderful big bands of the, of the time. And uh, Artie Shaw and, and Benny Goodman were the were the leaders, and they, all, they both played clarinet, so that was uh, sort of a natural. Right. Now, the clarinet that you got came for your 10th birthday from your parents. Was it because they saw the Klezmer fellow in the backyard? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> why, why the clarinet? Do you know why the clarinet? Did you ask for it? No. Uh, probably, for one thing, it probably was cheap. <laughs> you know, if you buy a, a good violin or, or a fine piano. It, it's, a, it's, it's quite an investment. And, and everybody was pretty poor in those days, I guess. And, uh, and the clarinet was uh, something very accessible. I think they paid $18 and change for it. And uh, it was a slow start for me, though. I didn't want to practice, you see. Uh, is that really true? When did you have your first lesson? Did you start with a teacher right away? Well, they got me a teacher. Uh, I guess they must have called the Musicians Union and found somebody that would come to with to our apartment on a weekly basis, and uh, it was very slow at the beginning. I did, really didn't want to leave the, the vacant lot across the way where everybody in Brooklyn played stickball. <laughs> and uh, so I want to understand, at some point though, at some point you grew to like it. It seems to have worked out for you. When, when did that happen? Was that the first year well, or the fifth year? When did well, that happen? Well, you know, I guess after a while it, it uh, there was no turning back, you know. It, 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 was, uh, it, it was just uh, had to be, and uh, <laughs> I wasn't I, I wasn't what you would call a, a, a practicer uh, of uh, you know with a with a model to follow and so forth. I but I did play every day after I sort of got to like it, so it never it was out of my hands. Pretty much, it became an extension of me, and uh, and uh, I was sort of unruly in my. Uh, my practicing, but uh, I think uh, when I finally got a proper teacher, he said to some people, he said that he gave me a book of studies a week. Oh, wow. I, I'd sort of wade through a whole book of studies, uh, and, and I'd get a new one each week. Now, was that Leon uh, Rushenoff? Yes, that was, his name was Leon Rushenoff. Tell us, when, how, did you get a, how did you get together with him? And he was in the city in Manhattan? No, he was in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to cross the river yet. Well, I don't mean to be that, impatient. That's right. Well, we you can know, stay in Brooklyn uh, as long there, as we there want. There was a little mom and pop music store in the neighborhood, uh, and uh, uh, the teacher I had for a year, uh, who was a, a fellow that played with the dance band, I think, he went off on, on the road with the dance band, and he never came back. <laughs> I, I guess it, maybe he didn't. Maybe uh, it was too. Uh, it wasn't pleasant enough for him. Uh, teaching me. I don't know. It might have been. But, uh, but this uh, fellow in the, in the mom and pop's store, he recommended uh, this fellow, Leon Rushenoff, uh, who had been, uh, I guess he had studied with uh, 
famous uh, player in New York, Simeon Bellison, and so forth. And, and uh, I, I started studying with him when I was 11. And he was my, became my major, major teacher over the years. Very influential. Yeah.